The 2019 GMC Sierra 1500 has a host of amazing design features. Some of these features can be found on competing trucks, but others are exclusive and really set GMC's designers apart from the competition. Here I'll run down a list of my favorites. The bed lights come in handy if you're getting an early start or having a late night. If you want your bed's interior to last, I'd say the spray-on bed liner is a must. In fact, I wish the entire truck was painted in the spray-on bed liner, then you wouldn't have to worry about scratching it. There are a lot of tie-down points in here. We got three on each side in the back, three in the front, and then these panels here, I believe, are optional tie-downs. So, I mean, already there's 12 in it, and you can get another six, so that'd be 18. One thing I really like about the door handles is that there is a physical button that you can click, and it's on all four doors. It's even on the rear passenger side door. On most cars, like on my wagon, it's not a physical button. It's just this sort of little indentation. And you see how it took me like a couple tries to get that? That's why I prefer having the physical button with the tactile feedback. You can feel it click in. Here's a nice design detail, actually two of them. Uh, one is that they've got this footwell in the bumper that you can fit a boot right into. And up here, where you grab... Guys, come on, knock it off. Right here where you grab, if you look down into this opening, typically this is just a rectangle. But the designers have taken the time to sort of cut this little angle on a smooth round edge there so that you don't... You're not pinching your finger in a corner as you grab this to pull yourself up. Uh, that's a nice little detail. Did you guys get out of here? Jeez Louise. Okay, there is a crazy amount of storage uh, inside this truck. In addition to the pockets in the door well, you've got another little hidden pocket down here by your leg. The designers took the time and thought about it and they set this really nice angle in the compartment where you can set your cell phone down. And that just about places it at what I think is the perfect angle. Not for you to look at while driving, but just so that when you're, you know, stopped. And if you're doing work, you can glance down and see your phone screen. It's actually got underneath the phone wireless charging capacity. In the center you've got this ridiculously massive console. This thing is so big you could rent it out on Airbnb. You got dual glove boxes. One up top, one below. Passenger side has also got of course the bins in the door and as well. Let me try to get the camera around. There's another large compartment. Right down, right down here. There is no sunglass storage up top, but there's plenty of other places to put a pair, including this recessed compartment here. These two circular compartments can be used to hold drinks, emu eggs, or ostrich eggs. The crew cab's rear storage is voluminous. The rear seats easily flip up, and underneath them is a handy storage tray that runs the full width of the cabin. It'll hold a chainsaw or a rifle, no problem. Now here's a really brilliant feature. GMC's designers have turned that dead space behind the seats into very handy storage compartments. On both sides, of course. This is where I kept all of the ratchet straps, bungees, and tie-down stuff. The center panel folds down to serve as an armrest, featuring cup holders and a rectangular compartment that you can drop a phone or a gadget into. The console in front of the rear seats has more cup holders and controls for the heated rear seats, two types of USB ports, a cigarette lighter power outlet, and the vents. With the seats folded up, there is a ridiculous amount of room. Particularly if you're used to a single cab pickup, where the only thing you can fit behind the seat is a clipboard, you will be spoiled by the amount of space in a Sierra Crew Cab. I was literally losing tools back here, and that's a great problem to have. Now, with the design of the center console, there is a lot going on here. But I actually don't mind it. Although it's dense, it's not chaotic, and it's pretty well considered, I feel. At this level, we basically have the monitor and the stereo controls. This is basically the climate control level. Um, and then down at the bottom, we have got this array of buttons. These are all functions to do with the vehicle. You got the parking assist, uh, the automatic tailgate opening, the hazards, of course, traction control on off. I do prefer that these are physical buttons rather than some kind of menu that you have to turn a dial and scroll through to get to. I, I like the immediacy of being able to hit these things. Down here, there are plenty of power options. You've got the two USB connections. You've got the cigarette light, cigarette lighter adapter. And then, of course, you've got one ten with a three prong, uh, which is nice. So overall, although this seems like a lot, I am confident that if I actually owned the vehicle or spent a long amount of time with it, I would gradually sort of automatically learn where these things were. And I much prefer having a physical button wherever possible. Okay, so this is kind of tricky to shoot, but you can see 
in the mirror obviously you can see me holding the phone shooting but you can also see a hint of a car back there that's my wagon and if I turn this to camera mode you can see the car clear as day uh, you're not seeing the rear seat headrests with a rear window frame furthermore you can set uh, the brightness with these two uh, buttons here and you can also set the magnification if I wanted to zoom in on this or zoom out. Now the biggest hassle of a full-size truck is trying to see what's around you and GM's surround vision system completely removes this hassle. I can easily see everything around me which is super useful on a farm and would certainly be handy if you had a bunch of kids running around. It's also got these guidelines on the screen that show you precisely where the vehicle would fit. I can't stress how useful this is. I'm trying to back up down a road that's been curving and if you can see when I turn the wheel the yellow lines in that top view even show you the arc of the front corner of the truck. Um, extremely helpful. This is super useful for backing up to a tight spot and you want to put the truck in exactly the position you want. And at night in an unlit area the truck's backup lights provide plenty of illumination for you to see by. Edric took the truck to a parking lot to try the surround vision system there. This button right here shows the view on both sides of the truck. So you can see how close you are to the curb or to that line. Here he's clicking through the different camera options. I cannot stress enough how useful the Multipro tailgate is. I found myself using the step component all the time. It's got some other configurations that I didn't have any use for, but you might. It all depends on what you're using the truck for. One disappointment with the tailgate is this cargo stop. It's a cool idea, but it's just shy of eight feet, meaning you can't use it to hold a four by eight sheet in place. Now, I don't have a sheet of plywood handy, but I just grabbed an eight foot long uh, one by two just to illustrate. And you can see where it would end up. So if we were to pull this stop up, it's just a little bit too short of a distance to get a full sheet of plywood and it's, I'd say it's about two and a half inches. Now you may be wondering why did GMC's designers do this? Didn't they realize that people would want to carry sheet goods? Um, of course they must have but uh, you know the answer is mass production. This is basically um, the GMC Sierra is at some point in the factory process identical to the Chevy Silverado which has certain dimensions and they couldn't make a tailgate uh, longer or obviously it would be taller uh, when you closed it. So this is a sort of compromise uh, that they had to live with. That being said, the step feature makes the tailgate an absolute winner for me. If I had the money for this level of truck, the tailgate alone would make me buy this truck over the competition. Having a functional staircase into the bed vastly increases its utility, and in my opinion, it's a game changer. The reason I put the power step in number one is simply because you use it every time you get in and out of the truck, and it is dang useful. Not to mention the magic trick where it goes backwards and lets you access the bed. By the way, the power step can only be ordered with the Denali. Okay, so here's a design feature I'd like to see. I'm often coming back to the truck with both hands full. I got a tool in one hand and I want to be able to open up the door handle without fear of this tool striking the paint and damaging it. If so, I don't know what the designers could do it, but if there was some kind of protective area around the door, some way for me to get this door open with a tool in one hand and not have to worry about scratching the paint, that'd be great. You'll notice I use both the Denali and the more off-road minded AT4 in this video, yet haven't commented on the differences. That's because for liability reasons, I wasn't allowed to put either truck through a proper off-road test where the differences would become sharp and the AT4 would dominate. In my casual farm use, the only differences I noticed were that the AT4's off-road tires obviously navigate the property better than the Denali street tires, and only the Denali has the power step. The AT4 is two inches taller, and since it doesn't have the power step, it's a bit of a climb to get into it. If I had the budget and had to choose between these two models, I couldn't live without the power step or the kind of stuff I'd be doing, so I'd pick the Denali, but I'd put a good set of off-road tires on it. In my opinion, that would be the perfect work truck. I don't care about the luxury stuff, I just love the functionality. Now there's a lot of things that I didn't cover in this video because there are already videos out there by proper truck guys and the experts do a way better job at that stuff than I could. 
but I didn't see many videos where they were using a truck the way I'd need to or talking about the design features, those little details that you have to live with every day, and those are pretty important to me when I'm making a purchasing decision. I can't speak to what it's like to live with this truck long term, but after two weeks I can tell you that GMC's designers deserve credit for really sweating the details of the user experience. This is a fantastic truck, and I learned that you should never try to shoot a truck video when there's turkeys around. So, for the purposes of this video, so there's still plenty of mucking left to do, but shut up. Guys, I'm, I'm trying to shoot a video here. Would you get out of my shot, please? You guys want to be in the video that bad, huh? Fine, you happy? Stop following me.